What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max. If you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified of when a new video goes live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So I do want to mention that the iPhone 15 Pro Max has Apple's latest A17 Pro system on a chip. So this is Apple's first three nanometer chip. It has a six core CPU with two high performance and four high efficiency cores. It also has a six core GPU design. So the first test I ran on this iPhone 15 Pro Max was as you'd probably expect at this point was Geekbench 6. So this is designed to test the performance of the A17 Pro's CPU. So for this, I got a single core score of 2,923 and a multi-core score of 6,910. So when running the same test with the iPhone 14 Pro, it scored 1,860, whereas the iPhone 15 Pro Max scored 2,923. The performance has certainly increased quite a bit. The next test I ran was once again from Geekbench, but this time from their compute lineup of tests, which is designed to test the performance of those six graphical cores. So for this test, I got a score of 26,095. So at least when it comes to the GPU's performance compared to the iPhone 14 Pro, it's a massive increase, almost double the performance, with the iPhone 14 Pro scoring 15,733. The next test I ran was once again from Geekbench, but this time from their machine learning set of tests, which is designed to test the performance of how machine learning tasks can be completed using the CPU, GPU, and the neural engine. So when testing the CPU performance, I got a score of 1,210. And when testing the performance of the GPU, I got a score of 2,729. But when testing the neural engine's performance, I got a score of 3,581. The next benchmarking application which I ran on the iPhone 15 Pro Max was GFX Bench Metal, which is designed to test the 6 core GPU found in the A17 Pro. Now, GFX Bench runs a number of different tests which vary from both higher and lower levels of intensity. For this, I have calculated the average across each category, but as always, I will show you each individual result. So, for the higher intensive graphics task, I got an average frame rate of 85.41 frames per second, but for the lower intensive tasks, I got an average frame rate of 200 and 9.62 frames per second. I then ran a Wi-Fi network speed test and got download speeds of 476 megabits per second and upload speeds of 102 megabits per second. And when testing this iPhone's 5G performance here in the UK using the EE network, I got download speeds of 334 megabits per second and upload speeds of 31.6 megabits per second. I also wanted to test the read and write performance of this iPhone storage, so I ran the Jazz Disk Speed Test and got read speeds of 1458 megabytes per second and write speeds of 1343 megabytes per second. The next test I ran was the Antutu benchmark, which tests the CPU, GPU, the storage, and the memory. So when running this test, I got a score of 1,344,141. I wanted to further test this iPhone storage, so I ran the storage test from Antutu and got a score of 74,585. So as you can see, I got write speeds of 1,611 megabytes per second and read speeds of 1,413 megabytes per second. The next test I ran was the Antutu HTML5 test. Now with this, I got a score of 66,917. The next set of tests I ran came from 3 Mark, and when running the wildlife test, which is a graphics test ran at 2560 by 1440, I got a score of 8741 with an average frame rate of 52.3 frames per second. And when running the wildlife stress test, the highest score I got was 8779, whereas the lowest was 7163. The next test I ran on this iPhone was the wildlife extreme test from 3 Mark. 
So this test is run at 4K UHD, so that's 3840 by 2160. And when running this test, I got a score of 2666 with an average frame rate of 16 frames per second. Not too bad considering this is coming from a phone. So I wanted to see how stable the A17 Pro found within this iPhone 15 Pro Max would perform over prolonged periods of time, running the Wildlife Extreme test over a consecutive 20 loops. So the highest score I got when running this test was 2727, whereas the lowest was 2086 which means that this phone is approximately 75% stable. So when you are pushing the device, it reduces its performance by up to 25%. You may already be aware that the A17 Pro brings with it hardware ray tracing. So I ran the Solar Bay test from 3 Mark to test its performance. So with this test, I got a score of 4,088 with an average frame rate of 15.5 frames per second. Now when stressing the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the best score I got was 4467, whereas the lowest was 3587, which means that this iPhone is approximately 80% stable, so when you are pushing it and you are playing any games that take advantage of the hardware ray tracing in this iPhone, that you could expect the performance to dip by up to 20%. I also exported a 4K project using iMovie, which has a length of 5 minutes and 24 seconds, so when running a time to export through iMovie, it took 4 minutes and 8 seconds to complete. So that'll be it for today's video. Of course, if you liked the video, then be sure to like the video. If you are new around here, then be sure to subscribe, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. As always, if you've got any questions or if there's anything that you'd like to see further tested on this iPhone, then be sure to leave them down below in this video's comment section, or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in this video's description. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care, and have a good one.